wonderful introduction. It's our pleasure to be here. So, hello everyone. This is Arne. And today, Suno Kahani, Arne Ki Jubani, which means let us start with a story. Once upon a time, there were two frogs who lived in a small pond near a high hill. They used to always stay in or around the pool and had never visited any other place. One day, a bunny came rushing to the pond to drink some water. One of the frogs asked him, why are you in such a hurry? The bunny said, I am in a hurry to reach the top of the hill, where is going to be the most beautiful and rare scenery there. It occurs only once in 10 years. All the animals from the jungle have already reached the top of the hill, and I too need to reach there before the evening. And saying this, he hurriedly left and hopped and hopped and disappeared like a gust of wind. The two frogs also got very excited as they had never visited any place. So they decided to go to the top of the hill to witness such a rare sight. All the other animals of the jungles had already climbed to the top of the hill to see such a spectacular scenery. The hill was too steep for the two little frogs, but both of them gathered all their courage and started to climb. As they were climbing the hill, they found it was very difficult. Every time they jumped a few steps, they fell back a couple of steps. From the top of the hill, other animals saw this. They said, oh little frogs, oh little frogs, it is not easy job. Why you try so hard, go back and stop. But the frogs continued to climb. They climbed a few more steps. But again the animal shouted, oh little frogs, the hill is too high, try you may die. Finally, one of the frogs gave up. He stopped and he went back down. But the other frog, even though he was sweating badly and was very tired, continued going up. One step, two step, three step, and he finally reached the top of the hill and enjoyed the rarest heavenly sight he had ever seen in his entire life. The other animals were very surprised. They went to him and asked him, how were you able to make it to the top of the hill when everyone was telling you that you can't do it? The frog said, eh? The frog was deaf was in, unable to hear all the negative commotion going on. He replied to the animals, I did not know that you were saying that I can't do it. I thought you were encouraging me to come up. This story tells you that you should turn a deaf ear to all the negativity around you and you can do wonders and reach the sky. I'm sure you all like the story and remember it for a very long time. But if I had simply lectured you that be positive, don't listen to negativity. You would have not remembered the very next day. So this is how stories work. Stories influence you deeply. But these days, slowly, we are forgetting the importance and significance of storytelling, especially among small kids. These days, there are so many resources available with picturization on YouTube, Netflix. Electronic media is on your fingertips and children simply click in nanoseconds to watch a video. The thing is, once a video is playing in front of a small child, there's nothing left for them to imagine. Our grandparents used to do storytelling without any visual aids and just by voice modulations. And we have left with a thousand ways we could imagine. Storytelling ignites the imagination and encourages the child to build a picture of their own. If 10 kids are listening to a story without any visual aids, all 10 will imagine a different and unique picture of their own. This is why we should encourage storytelling among children and youth. And that is why I wanted to start an initiative for storytelling three years ago. But it was not an easy task. It was 2018 and I was in fifth grade. It was a small and tiny event for my age. And on top of that, I had eating disorder and I look like a skeleton. Let me show you how I looked earlier. This is how I look now. But this is how I used to look three years ago. Who would believe that this child has an idea worth listening? I looked 
like a skeleton. People do not take me seriously. Those days, I went to some institutes and schools to discuss my idea and support for my initiative or storytelling organization, but they did not even allow me to talk. So, and so sometimes, right then and there, I quickly made tips and flyers and I stood at the gate, distributed it to parents. It was not something easy for me or my family because we had never done such a thing which, which fell below our social status. And some of them just threw the flyer right one step ahead. People were too busy with the big charters and storytelling seemed very small to them. And so no one took my storytelling organization seriously. The journey for 2018-2021 was not easy. Many times I was discouraged and demotivated and I almost stopped it. But I gave one last try and I created a small community with very few interested parents of toddlers and started telling stories to them. Now I have a community of 150 parents from no one even giving me an ear to hear. Now people are very excited to join my initiative and they send me messages of appreciation. I was so happy and thankful to see such messages. Here are some more messages that were sent by parents. One parent said, during this lockdown period, SDS India has helped children to discover their talents. It also helped parents to observe the strength and weakness. Another parent said, I really feel so lucky that my daughter is a part of this community of storytelling. My initiative is called Storytelling Society of India. In my first live storytelling session, I only had less than five children, but I continued to conduct my free online sessions for four months without any financial support. And finally, I was able to conduct my first ticketed storytelling session and the response I received was unbelievable. I had around 30 kids who actually paid to attend my session. I was so excited to see that I have finally been set on the path of becoming a storytelling entrepreneur. Storytelling has also helped me in my multifaceted personal growth. <clears throat> Today, because of storytelling, I am a published author. I have written three books and I am a writer for Brainfield High Magazine. I am a reporter with Times of India and for Indica's newspaper in USA. I have written and published around 100 stories and articles. Storytelling also helped me in becoming a young life coach with MIT Square. My podcast is called Ek Kahani Arne Ki Jubani. From barely 10 children listening to my audio stories, today I have 20,000 plus listens of my stories, which is a record for any child podcaster. In my childhood, I was exposed to the books from the age of three months. Until six years, I didn't get exposed to any screen, but books and storytelling. As a result, I am now an avid reader and read heavier books faster than most of the adults. I have my own library of books. See, when my parents were children, most of them lived in a big joint family and their whole family lived in one house. Most of our parents grew up with their grandparents, listening to their wonderful stories, stories that create memories. Our parents were fortunate that they lived close to their grandparents, but my generation, most kids don't live with their grandparents. That's why most of kids are deprived of storytelling. So I thought, why not I only start a community of storytelling. This will benefit two ways. Kids will listen to my stories and I too will enjoy their stories. That inspired me to start Storytelling Society of India. Another treasure that India has is the number of stories that we have. We have legendary stories, stories of gods, Ramayana, Bhambharata, and stories of Raja Rani, and so many stories. Even our history books are full of stories. The list goes on and on. But I observed that slowly the tradition and practice of stories and storytelling has been diminishing, especially among kids. So I decided to fulfill my role encouraging children to children to start storytelling 
and i decided to uh, encourage stories amongst children and adults of india with my initiative i am trying to pass over treasure of storytelling to future generations there are stories on every topic in the world i can even tell stories for topics such as gratitude and anger management we can make every topic very interesting through storytelling and that way kids remember a topic for a very long time in my initiative i even play many storytelling games where kids have to build stories in teams that promotes the team building among kids too through my initiative children learn a new skill of storytelling they also develop public speaking skills through storytelling storytelling encourages their imagination focus and confidence let me close today's session with a small true story from my life more than 30 years passed when she died i can i can still still i can still clearly remember her wrinkly face losing arms and soft palms she was the most beautiful and kind person i had ever met she was very close to my heart i have so many lovely memories of hers but my fondest memory is one when i used to sleep and cuddle in her bed and she would tell me stories until i fell asleep her stories always began with ek tha raja ek tha tota which means once there was a king and once there was a parent and after that she used to build a brand new story every time i am 40 now and i still miss her stories said my mother i would do anything to meet my grandma one more time and listen just one more story tears started rolling from her eyes when my mother was remembering her grandmother and the stories my mother may have forgotten the stories that her grandmother told her but she can still feel the influence that her grandmother story is created in her life through stories she has a very profound memory of her grandmother that she can connect with her grandmother even now and that's how stories create memories bye